see something funny? Yes. Here I am. Yes. You know, it's times like these where I wish I had memorized my monologue Joe script. <laughs> I barely remember, I think I wrote on the top of the first page, no more dead cow jokes. <laughs> because eventually, like, well, that was like my main way of telling the narrative, dead cow jokes, but it didn't work. I think what I originally wanted to do was you know something sophisticated, something something dry and straightforward. I was thinking like how to protect yourself under uncontrollable circumstances. I thought it would be just straightforward, nothing flashy. But uh, I ran into a problem. The script was was too sincere, and uh, I, I have a problem with sincerity. It's so gross. I mean, I don't know. I guess it's brave when people like just say what they want to say and like don't feel any shame for it, but to me, it's like some kind of Public indecency. <laughs> You're like making me feel things I don't want to feel, mostly secondhand shame. <laughs> when I see people like just really pouring their guts out, like up here, it makes me want to turn into like a turtle and then an armadillo, snail, and roly poly, <laughs> just so I can like wrap myself up inside all of my different shells. And just Wait out this ooey gooey emotional nakedness. <laughs> Yo, I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'd do if you were. <laughs> when I said I didn't memorize my script, I did not memorize my script. <laughs> I would have memorized it. I would have memorized it. But well, I procrastinated until yesterday. And yesterday, I ate so many jelly beans. <laughs> I had such a bad stomach, ache, did no homework, stayed for no test. Did not memorize my script. So I'm out there in the hall, you know, Google Docs open. And I'm like, it's too late now. <laughs> and I was really relaxed, I took my shoes off. And someone's like, dude, you're up. I'm like, Right now? Like right now. <laughs> but I've uh, I've learned my lesson. No. Jelly beans in small quantities only. <laughs> <laughs> Never doing that to myself again. I've learned it and no more, not now and not ever again. I'm standing up to keep, you know, keep you interested. <laughs> but, like I said, something about sincerity, I've got a problem with it. These people here are smart. They're like smart, and they, they always come up here and they're like, Yeah, here's what I love, here's what I hate, here's what I'm scared of. And I'm like, These guys are smart people, why are they doing this? And I guess one answer is that it's, it's, it's healthy, right? Being sincere and honest is healthy. You know, humans are a social animal. We're built to cry and to be passionate. We're built to need each other. An infant, if it is not touched, it's not hugged or cuddled, will literally die from a lack of affection. Beneath the people we are today are those children we used to be somewhere deep down in the pit of our hearts, next to our most harrowing pains and our deepest affections, we still have that infant 
asking to be touched and to be loved and understood. But I compare it <laughs> compared to brushing your teeth. Everyone knows you should brush your teeth. Dentists say it all the time. And everyone's like, yeah, I brush my teeth. And I say, I brush my teeth, but let's be real. No one brushes their teeth. <laughs> I don't brush my teeth, you don't brush your teeth. <laughs> now that I think about it, flossing would have been a better comparison. <laughs> Bed. I'm actually a strong advocate for flossing. If you could look me up in the program for more information. I'm in there, it's in my bio. Yeah, this guy's in for a surprise. I also really love mouthwash. Uh, it doesn't clean everything, like you got floss, like the gum lines where the bad stuff happens. But, you know, flossing then like the bad breath doesn't bother you or the people around you. It's a temporary solution and it works great. <laughs> I don't like dentists though. Uh, it's always bothering me. Floss your teeth. Clean your room. <laughs> Major in biology. <laughs> My mom's a dentist. <laughs> She's the best dentist. Because you pay for these blueberries. <laughs> what was I talking about? Sincerity. You're right! Oh God, right. Sincerity and vulnerability. I don't know, you ever just meet one of those people that are just saying too much personal stuff? I'm like, dude, this is like the second time I've ever, I've ever talked to you. I'm sorry about your mom, but <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. I'm making you feel real uncomfortable. <laughs> I live in like this revolving door between isolation and intimacy because and as a thinking creature, thinking creature, uh, a person who collects knowledge and learns stuff, I know vulnerability and honesty is healthy and it's important. And I think sometimes it's even a moral obligation, right? But as an emotional creature, who feels stuff, I just can't help but cringe every time. <laughs> Those are blueberries good. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> they better be for the price. Two fifty? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> because I hate sincerity so much, and I don't want to be healthy, I thought of this other way to live life where it's less cringy but it gets the job done, and I think it gets the job done pretty well. All right, here's my method. Shoot low. Shoot so low that nobody notices. Push yourself down first, so that nothing else can. <laughs> Imagine this scenario, right? You study hard, take the ACT, you get a 13. <laughs> You may think to yourself, yes, I qualify for the presidency. <laughs> that's not a Trump joke, that's an America joke. <laughs> Trump jokes are too easy, too easy. Require zero effort. Just drop the name in a funny voice. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes I feel like we're just bullying Trump. He's old, dying, and probably got something, you know. <laughs> but you know what's worse than bullying a 
old, dying man giving a 13 on the ACT. And you might be bummed, but if you shoot low and you push yourself down first, here's what you get to say. You get to say, ha, ACT, you can't make me feel dumb if I make me feel dumb first. <laughs> See, immune. And you don't, you don't really like need all those things you dream and work for, right? Like, a job you like is, is nice, but it's not necessary. You don't need to be understood or, you know, get good grades. Instead, you could just summon the motivation out of the air, you know? Just get high off your own ecstasy and ride that wave of enthusiasm as far as it goes. You know, if it's so painful to watch like your desires slip out of your grip, then don't reach for them in the first place, <laughs> right? I mean, no matter what path we take in the labyrinth of choices presented to us every day, whenever we walk out or crawl out into the daylight, that finish line will always be a funeral for what could have been, those better things that might have happened but didn't. That's a really poofy metaphor. <laughs> I mean, here, second place is nice. It's good, but it's also very unsatisfying because there's always first. You know, I think about when I was younger, all the you know, things I wanted to do, the things I wanted to accomplish, all, like the, all of the people I wanted to become. And then I think about how I never became any of them. Sometimes I guess I was lazy. Other times, you know, there are circumstances you can't control. You know, I've worked myself to death and all I've gotten out of it is a loss of faith. Yeah, let me check. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> For two pets, they better be. See, some people don't learn though, you know? They see, they see what they want, and they see that they've messed up, and instead of just, you know, hands off, let it go where it goes, they grab it, and they squeeze harder this time. They squeeze until the veins pop, squeeze until the nails bleed, and squeeze until the bones crack. How much more do you need to hurt yourself? How much more do you need to squeeze until you learn to let go, you know? Let go of those passions that fuel you into a painful disappointment. Here's the thing, all right. I had so many dress rehearsals and I just made something up every time. And, and, and Mr. Rossi gave me the thumbs up. I still don't have nothing memorized. But also, here's the thing. When you come up here and you pour your heart out onto the stage, you know, yeah, I guess some people might be touched, but things don't change, right? Because most things are dead. Like, I could give the most painful and heart-moving story up here, but the sky is unmoved, right? The rocks don't care. That's because the rocks are dead. And these walls are dead. And this stage is dead. And this is dead hair. And this is dead flesh on dead bones made of dead atoms that just will not care. I mean, I could go get married, have some kids, you know, I'm in my house, and then one day I discover that my actual house was the one next door, and what difference would that make? <laughs> Who are you and what have you done with Aubrey? <laughs> but, in a world 
of villains, you know? <laughs> There's nothing special about a place or a person. There's no reason to hope for a miracle. Like, there are things that can't change, you know, laws that won't move. And here's one of those things. In order for a one person to win, a lot of other people need to lose. And you and we are those losers. <laughs> if you want to protect yourself from uncontrollable circumstances, there's a certain mindset you gotta adopt. When you embrace this kind of beautiful defeatism, life stops being a Ferris wheel. Things become consistent, but more importantly, they become comfortable. They become comfortable. You need to give up on those virtues that everyone pushes forward because a lot of the time they're just hoping for too much. Believe that all your friends are shallow. Watch your own back because everybody else is too busy watching theirs. It, you can never be betrayed if there's never any trust and that's the biggest one. You can never, ever be betrayed by people or the world or anything else if you never, ever put stock in those things in the first place. And that is what it takes. That is what it takes to protect yourself from uncontrollable circumstances. I've tried too hard and dreamed too big. I've hurt myself too many times, but no more. Not now, and never again. <laughs> That's why I don't brush my teeth. <laughs> Mouthwash is enough for me. <laughs> I think that's supposed to be symbolic or something. I mean, I could tell you if I like looked at the script, but I don't know. This whole thing was kind of a mess. I started out talking about sincerity, but somewhere I got married and had kids. <laughs> Never even had a girlfriend. And the way things are going, I never will. <laughs> Me and the mouthwash all the way. <laughs> I mean, saving that for later. Making it all up here. We got, we got a schedule, guys. But, uh. I mean. I don't believe everything I've said up here, you know, like I said, like, don't hope, basically, hope and you'll just hurt yourself again and again. I mean, I kind of believe that. I don't believe it all the way, you know, a little bit of moderation. <laughs> but, I still hope you guys enjoyed. <laughs>